convince myself to buy into Muscle Demon. Yeah, they're really nice. The, uh, and these look really good. Okay. Hi, Donnie. How, uh, how many people in this room know what System 76 is or have heard of us? Good. Last time, it was like two people. <laughs> that was I, that was really bad. Like I thought I was walking into a safe place, but it. But it was a room full of MacBooks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, the uh, at a Linux conference, unfortunately. But we're working to change that. Yeah, with this laptop right here. So uh, I don't know if uh, many people know this, but we've been around actually eleven years. When I wrote the talk last August, uh, maybe a little before last August, it was 10 years, which is why the confusion on the, the uh, if you read the actual talk page, it says, it says lessons from 11 years making machines born to run Linux. And then like the first sentence says, we've been making machines for 10 years. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, some things didn't get updated, including the summary. So instead of doing the same thing and changing this from a 10 to 11, I just added a, <laughs> a line under and spent the extra <laughs> minute. It's, it's, a, it's a work at, that I created, you know, this slide deck, and I didn't want to change it in any fundamental way, so I just added a little uh, extra information there at the bottom. Is, uh, is it set up, Emma? It's not working. Okay. This is our first test. Last time we had a talk, we announced that we were moving our manufacturing to uh, our in-house in Denver, and we and we had talked to the organizers of the conference, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, it'll all be recorded." And then uh, it was being recorded and streamed live without sound. <laughs> <laughs> and so we decided we were going to try and make this one available online because uh, it stuff like this, you know, I do, I come here, I do this, I want everybody who can see it to be able to, to view it. But uh, it's, what, 10.45 probably about now? Mm -hmm. So I'll just get started. Um, one thing uh, that people might not know about us is, uh, as far as we know, we are the single largest Linux-only vendor in the world, meaning that you know you have the, the Dells and the HPs, but as far as a dedicated Linux vendor, we probably do the most revenue <laughs> in this space. And uh, oftentimes, people come up to me and uh, I think they they don't know what our scale is these days because uh, they'll say something along the lines of like, you know, oh, well, this would be really cool, but you guys can't do that, <laughs> you know, or, or uh, you know, it must be hard to have Dell in the same space selling the XPS 13. And... Uh, it, and actually, <coughs> we're not in Dell's space. Dell is in our space. <laughs> like they, like that. We look at their effort, and it's like that's cute. <laughs> the uh, we. So we are recording this in this mic. So oh, okay, cool. Here. So yeah. I gotta stay stationary. Yeah, All right, great. Like, yeah. Well, I'm glad it's. I'm glad it's being recorded. All right. So, uh, how? Raise your hand if you think we do tens of thousands of dollars a year in in sales. Or above? Or above, right. Yeah, yeah. Get like two computers, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands. <coughs> Half a million. Millions. Millions. Tens of millions. <laughs> All of the above. We, we uh, have had a fantastic year. We see about 100 to 150% growth year over year. 
and uh, we've managed to make our way into companies like Pixar, Tesla, Google, Amazon. Uh, we, we are quickly becoming the uh, developers, like that's the machine that they want or that they're interested in. Kind of like that girl you really want to date and you're like, man, that would be really nice. <laughs> like the, uh, we've been fortunate in that uh, over the course of 11 years, Linux has won. Uh, it's, it seems crazy to say that. We won everywhere except for the desktop. <laughs> and uh, that's changing too because when you win everywhere except for the desktop, that suddenly you're like, well, I guess I'm deploying to, you know, a Linux machine. I could just do my development on a Linux machine too. That would make testing a lot easier. And so many great tools work best under Linux, like Docker, because it's implementing the Linux container <laughs> uh, in the kernel. And, uh, and more and more we get people who are saying, well, I was using Windows and I was doing this hack where I had Windows and then Ubuntu, bash on Ubuntu on Windows, and then I was running Docker in that, and they're like, finally I just made the switch, and everything that I was using before is there, Spotify, Slack, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's been good. But I'm going to take you back to the beginning. This is Carl. That's our CEO, back when System76 was one guy and a cat. <laughs> the uh, uh, everybody's got to start somewhere. It wasn't a garage for Carl; it was his basement. <coughs> and uh, I I like the story that he tells about the uh, what well, was a DHL guy? I think at the beginning, this D this guy came back, came down to pick up machines. And at the time, uh, System seventy six was a we sell things that either run Linux or work with Linux. And so we didn't just sell computers, we sold printers, peripherals that were known to work with Linux. And uh, I like his story where the, the DHL guy kept coming back and he just had more stuff to take every time. And he got to see like suddenly there were two people in the basement and then there were three people in the basement <laughs> and he was just taking more and more stuff every day out of the basement. And then eventually we moved to an office. Uh, we, uh, when we got started, it wasn't, it, for many of you, uh, you might know that we ship Ubuntu on our machines. It wasn't always going to be Ubuntu. There was a time when it was going to be Yoper. We really dodged a bullet there because <laughs> no one really knows what Yoper is these days. Um, Yoper was this up and coming Linux distribution that was going to take the world by storm. Um, and uh, at first when we tried Ubuntu, I, not me, I wasn't there. I was in high school doing stupid <laughs> stuff. Uh, like uh, one time I took the, I, I got a Linux ISO. So I got, it was Ubuntu, I think, Breezy Badger, Warty Warthog. It was in 2004, 2005. And, uh, and I thought it'd be really cool to change all the computers in the computer lab oh. to <laughs> <laughs> Linux. <laughs> but, uh, that's what I was doing when Yoper was around. Um, and, uh, and the thing was, we, uh, we gave, uh, Carl gave Ubuntu a try. He, then he went and gave Yoper a try. By the time he got back to Ubuntu, Ubuntu had matured enough and was in line with the GNOME release cycles that he thought that would be a good, consistent uh, distribution to base off of, especially when you're refreshing products. It gives you kind of a timeline for refreshing your products. Like, okay, every six months, we're going to refresh our product with the release, a new Ubuntu release. What's up with the name? What's the origination of the name? System 76? Yeah. This is a question I get every time. The origination of System 76 comes from the American Revolution, 1776. Mm -hmm. um, it's a call to freedom and all that good stuff that makes us say America and <laughs> <laughs> feel good about ourselves. This was the one of the first iterations of the website. Uh, I think it speaks for itself. Um, they loaded in less than six seconds. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> on IE6. It was, it was crazy time. Uh, 
<laughs> as you can see up here, we did all sorts of stuff. Oh, and you get free shipping if you if your order is over 800 bucks. Um, and I like if you look at the little asterisk, it's like computers to change your world, business, education, life, asterisk, Linux rules. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Carl, why, why, why this? Like, I, I'm not sure I get it. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought the answer was going to be something profound, or at least involve VLC. <laughs> and he said, no, I just saw the statue and thought it looked cool. <laughs> and like, so I was like, maybe in the future when I ask you questions like that, just lie. <laughs> a core tenet of uh, being a Linux hardware company is our connection to the community. The, uh, this is interesting because, you know, <laughs> these pictures, they just get me like what the heck guys the it's it's so it's it's weird to think about how things have changed because this was like the Colorado loco scene and uh, and now you know it's more generally like Linux user group but uh, but we did a lot of stuff around the community to try and engage to try and get as close as we could to your normal Linux user in order to understand what it was that they wanted out of their hardware where were their pain points and uh, I think we've done a pretty good job of keeping with that since. Um, this talk, in case you didn't know, is kind of just all over the place. But that's <laughs> because I'm taking you through the chaos. This was, at the beginning, there was chaos. There was, there was, there was this statue. There were these guys. It's like Einstein in the middle. Yeah, there. yeah. It, was, it was pure chaos. The team grew, we got people. <laughs> it wasn't Carl doing everything anymore. He used to answer the phone like, hey, this is System76. It's like, I'd like to talk to Carl. One moment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> Eventually that wasn't the case. We have Ian and Emma, who's back there. Do you know when this was, Emma? 2011. Okay, so we've been around a while. Uh, Ian and Emma are both still there. That's a funny looking hat in the IRC, in case, in case you're in the Ubuntu IRC. Um, funny hat? Funny looking hat? I think he's just by a funny hat now. Oh. <laughs> huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we were a bunch of Linux, the, the, the team to begin was a bunch of Linux geeks drinking beer. <laughs> And talking about how cool it would be to, you know, make a, m where we could live in a world where you got hardware and it, everything just worked out of the box. And some time passed, and it became less of it'd be cool if you got hardware that worked, and it became what if it wasn't just hardware that worked, it was an entire product. <coughs> so. Uh, this we went from this really chaotic time of just trying to ship things out the door that worked with Linux to a mindset change of now we're going to try and actually make Linux the, li the experience of getting a machine running Linux out of the box a pleasant one and an, an one that you can be excited about instead of like I bought this machine so that my wireless drivers work to I bought this machine because I like this machine and I feel a connection to it and I feel like this is a tool that I'm in excited to use. And so that started with a really simple gesture of adding an Ubuntu key where the Windows key is. Um, it's subtle, it doesn't change how the machine operates, but uh, it's really important as as Linux users. You know, we we talk a, a lot about the technical merits of something. There are no technical merits to changing <laughs> the Windows key to an Ubuntu key, but the there is a nice feeling when you look down at your keyboard and you're like, oh, yeah, like I'm running a machine that was designed to run Linux. So we learned 
once that changed, you can see like the web traffic spike on analytics and you can see like that there was a great response because we tapped into something. It was uh, everyone who's here, probably Linux is part of your identity, you know? And so by tapping into uh, that piece of your identity and having it so that you can share that identity with other people just by them seeing your machine, that was really powerful. And so, so we had this shift of let's ship all the things running with Linux to let's try and get to the core, which is a good product from conception to it's on now on your doorstep. And so we started, we, we changed from let's ship you Linux things to let's market open source. Let's market what makes open source unique, what makes the experience of using it unique, <coughs> and let's market this community. People come in uh, to our community, meaning they buy one of our machines, and sometimes they're um, Air in the Arch user, and sometimes they're, you know, Edna, who just randomly happened to cross the site and, you know, was interested in the machine, and now she's using it, and she's, you know, 79, 80 years old, and she's like, this is great, you know? Email works. <laughs> I get to the internet. I get to look at the kids on Facebook. And, uh, and it's really powerful when you hear, like, I, I just think of, like, things like Wayland, like, you know, all of the stuff that the end that a lot of end users don't really give a shit about <laughs> and so when i hear when i hear somebody talking about like how great it is that they have owned this machine for 7 years and it hasn't slowed down and everything just works you know it's like oh yeah people use computers for other things too they don't just you know write a whole bunch of code and <laughs> smash their head against the keyboard <laughs> um, so so that was really awesome we we uh we identified that what we were selling was this fantastic thing and that we didn't need to be a, apologetic for it. You know, sometimes you get Linux apologists, but I think that's just because we're, we're technical people and we've been too close to it. Because every time I sit down in front of Windows, like, I... I sometimes I forget how crappy that is, <laughs> and like so, so I like apologize for things like when somebody's using like a Linux machine for the first time. I'm like, oh yeah, and that we're working on that. <laughs> like, but then then I use Windows and it's like, and it's like, oh wait, this error came up. What does it say? E X zero seven one two five six eight four three nine uh, error. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, this is why I hate this. <laughs> like, uh, and, uh, and don't even get me started on that. Have you guys ever had to roll back a Windows patch? Oh, yeah. Have you ever had to do it from like their command line? <laughs> the The patch is like, I don't know if this is every patch or just they were just targeting me. <laughs> but the patch the patch has this really long like it's almost like a commit like you know like identifier it's like it, and it doesn't it does not have a naming convention it's not like patch where we fix the shit you know <laughs> like it's like it's like that same thing like 019264xb you know and it's case sensitive and uh, and so to roll it back you have to like type it out into the command line and like you just sit there and you're like double checking because it's like 250 characters and you're like I really hope I don't screw this up like because I'm in I'm in safe mode I can't copy and paste out of the browser so I'm just gonna have to like try and get as close as possible anyway Windows sucks we all knew that so let's move on and when you're marketing open source you have to be a part of the community you have to be a a part. I think this is where I honestly think this is where other people who are shipping Linux hardware, like the Dells and the HPs and the Lenovo's of the world, 
kind of fall down because they're not actually it that people in the company might be engaged with the community but the company itself is not like really engaged like you don't see them coming and talking i mean you might see barton occasionally but you don't see them co coming and talking at these events about what we about what we do why we do it what the point is and the why is of course because we think open source is the best type of software and we want to share it with the world and it's a lot harder to share it with the world when you have to say here's a live usb <laughs> plug it in it'll be okay maybe <laughs> <laughs> You don't have a high DPI screen, right? Oh, you do? <laughs> All right, shit. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, so uh, as a result, um, somebody said the other day, was talking about Red Hat and ha about how the discussions that happen in the community also happen in the company. Um, that's very much the same here. We argue about everything because everybody in there is a Linux geek. And Linux geeks are never short on opinions. <laughs> and so uh, so we have like, I'm sure Emma's heard this, where like the, the engineers are in the middle of, the, of our big open office. And that was a real mistake that we put them in the middle <laughs> because it starts out with like, with like, oh, uh, did you read that article about, well, this is kind of outdated now, but did you read that article about Mir, you know, and like the changes that went into that? And it's like, yeah, but I don't even understand why we're doing that, you know, like, like we should just be shipping Wayland, and then like eventually like more and more people like wander over like listening and it's like, I have something to say about that. And then someone's like, I don't even understand why we need like this whole desktop. Like, why can't we just have, you know, Emacs <laughs> and we just go to that world, and like, and eventually it just it gets. I know you had Stalin at your organization. Yeah, ever, there's always one, <laughs> and and uh, just remember, it's GNU slash Linux. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. Linux, that's just the kernel. Right. It's important yeah. for you to remember that right. the real stuff is in GNU. <laughs> that Linux thing, we could we could switch that out with Herd. <laughs> well, I, I think Debian uh, don't don't they have something they're playing with where it's like the Linux kernel and the BSD user land? No, uh, it's the GNU user land and or is it kernel? Is it? <laughs> See, this is this is how it happens. This is how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I forgot about this one. Uh, I just put this in here for fun. <laughs> It says, hey, 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 guys. Hey, hi. <laughs> did you, did you uh, hear about the space bar? Hey, the drinks are great. Oh, no. <laughs> but the atmosphere is terrible. <laughs> then somebody says, I heard they're out of this world. And then somebody left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So back to community. Uh, that's, a, that's a big part of of uh, who we are, we get, if you're going to be in an open source company, you have to be a part of the community. If you're not, well, I mean, you're gonna get shit for it anyway, <laughs> even if you are a part of the community, like Reddit, uh, if any of you are the people doing this, stop. Reddit is like, is like, oh, another System76 article, marketing shills posting on Reddit, you know? And then like, <laughs> we're all a part of the community, and so we're all, you know, we, we log into Reddit as part of habit, you know, and so we're just in there reading it. It's like, who posted this? We don't know that guy. <laughs> hey, does anyone know who is Mr. Tux? No, no. That's not any of us. Yeah, screw you, buddy. Like, we're not marketing shills. Like, <laughs> hey. but, uh, but that's, that's what separates us, you know, like, uh, like, and it, and uh, when I came up with this talk, it was more broadly going to be about like how you should take some of our principles and apply it to your you know endeavors, your project, your company. I end up just talking about System Seventy Six and me because I mean I'm up here and you guys sat down and <laughs> the doors closed, so I mean like it you know yeah I had the microphone, I had the conch, 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, so what what we try to do pretty consistently, and what any good project should do is is start reaching out to people who are excited about your about what you're doing. We this is an old picture of Brian Lunduk and Chris on Linux Action Show, and then and then Brian's Browner replacement Noah, and uh, <laughs> the and. That's not a racist thing, for the record. <laughs> like, the, uh, and uh, now we get to the Reddit. Uh, this is Cass, and this is him answering a question. And, uh, and so we, we're there. We, uh, we engage. We talk. We are a part of the community. We try to make a difference. We try to, you know, work with the broader community. Uh, oftentimes, so something something we have to stop doing as a community is demonizing companies when they are working on Linux. You know, the one of the things I see, and I didn't I didn't really understand it before, but like you see like Canonical do something, or you see Red Hat do something, and everybody formulates an opinion about what they're doing and acts like it's like the worst thing ever a lot of times. It's like I can't believe they're doing that. And, and if you take a second and you like step back, they're contributing open source code to the operating system that you use and they're, and they're paying people to do it. And, and yet there's so much negativity around like, like, you know, what, what, especially Canonical. Canonical gets a lot of it, you know. And, and uh, I think as a community that's kind of weird, you know, because we're all benefiting from their work and if they're paying somebody to work on, it's dead now, but like Unity, like this, you're, we're still gonna all benefit from that work, you know? The, so that's a tangent, uh, there's a lot of those, but, uh, but if, you're, if you're going to be on a project like this, if you're gonna make Linux machines, you gotta have a thick skin and be ready to, to communicate on Reddit. And in person, this is our super fan event. We, uh, it was Dungeons and Dragons themed because we're geeks. <laughs> <laughs> Those were good times. <laughs> That's enough of that slide. And, uh, and we keep growing. The, I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but that's an Oryx Pro right there. And that's Leo Laporte. And, uh, and we try to do a lot of evangelism and, uh, Sometimes that's really scary. Like we, like Leo gets his Oryx Pro, we know, we see his like name come up and so we're like, oh, this is gonna be cool. And then he gets it and he's like sitting there and he's like, <laughs> I just got this Oryx Pro and he's like in the chat, like with, you know, the people watching his show and he's like, what should I do? And they're like, install a different desktop. <laughs> like, you know, install i3, it'll be fine. We'll walk you through it, Gen just run 2. these commands. Install Gen 2, install Arch and like, we get a message and it's like, uh, guys, uh, Leo Laporte is installing, <laughs> like, you know, I don't know what desktop he was installing. Do you remember Emma? <laughs> like, like they're just they're just telling him to blow it all away, and we're like, don't do that, don't do that, not live on air. Like, like, it's it works out of the box. Like, you don't need to do that. And, but fortunately, we were there and we helped and made sure that it wasn't as crazy as it could have been, but now he's an Arch user, so that's neat. Uh, and one thing that is really important if you're running an open source company is to make people aware of what you're doing. Uh, when I got there here this past August, we were doing so much and contributing work upstream, but nobody knew, you know, like I would I, as they were t walking me through everything they do per Ubuntu release and how many bugs they file and, and how they chase this stuff through with the developers and everything, uh, you know, we get a lot of times it's like, oh, you just put Ubuntu on the machine and you ship it out and it's all fine, you know, but you, you guys don't really do anything. And, and, uh, and so the first thing I noticed was like, we got we to gotta talk about this. Like, we got to tell people like what goes into putting together a machine that works with Ubuntu out of the box. Like the, and uh, we also have to allow people to contribute and work with us on that effort. 
And so, you know, we put up a tutorial website we, where people can just go onto GitHub and submit like, here's what I did, you know, to, to, do, to fix this problem or to, here's how I made Fedora run on a System76 machine flawlessly. Uh, and that's been really awesome. It's allowed us to uh, not only accomplish big things, but also, uh, also talk about that work, have people engage with us on that work. You know, when we say we're tackling high DPI, you know, support in Unity 7, uh, when, before that, we were doing that. Nobody knew about it. It was a long process. We start talking about it. People start sending us emails like, I want to help. You know, this is really cool. Like, can I help with, like, submitting high DPI friendly icons? Like, how can I get involved? And uh, sometimes I think the onus is on on folks like System76 to remember that there are people out there who are working on this stuff and that we don't have to invent it completely in-house. We can have the help of all you fine people. Only some of you are fine. I have a suspicion <laughs> that some of you are not. <laughs> I'm just playing the odds. <laughs> I forgot this slide was in here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> We're still waiting. <laughs> I think it'll come in 1804, maybe. 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 All right, and then the thing I actually want to talk about. So, does anyone know what this is? Can anybody guess? This is uh, this is part of Project Hema, and this is where we've been going this whole time. So, I really touched on the title of the talk, but it's lessons learned from 11 years making machines born to run Linux. Number one lesson: it's easier to control everything <laughs> from the ground up. We source parts, you know. We get we try to make sure everything works with the Linux kernel. If it doesn't, like we work with like Realtek, you know, on like an audio DAC driver, which really just means like, hey, Realtek, uh, we want to use this. And they're like, here's all this code that like we touched a while back and it doesn't work in Linux, but maybe you guys can do something with it. And it's like, oh, thanks. Like, <laughs> and then we send it back and it's like, here, we wrote your driver. <laughs> like, please help us get it into the kernel. <laughs> but uh, so uh, we decided that the best way to solve this in the long run is to make all of our own shit in-house. So design and manufacture it. It also makes for a much better experience because uh, even if you're working with a big ODM, you know, in Taiwan, they're still like selling a bunch of machines that work well with Windows. And like, we don't really give a shit about that. And so it's like, so some of the things that they think about, they're like, oh yeah, this is really great in Windows and everybody loves it. And it's like, well, we don't really care about that. But because of economies of scale, it's like, you know, we end up taking some things that we don't really want in our machine. So the, at scale, which was the talk where it was no sound, <laughs> Carl talked about how we're building a manufacturing facility in Denver and we already have a desktop designed, and we're working on a laptop design, and hopefully next year or the following year, both of those will be on the market, and they'll be completely open source hardware. The community will be able to contribute to the creation of the product, and it's not like these Kickstarters where you have like, you know, is it gonna make it, is it not? Like, we already have the money set aside, we already have the manufacturing facility. We, it's now, it's now it's time to make hardware truly born to run Linux and uh, and we're really excited about that and uh, and so if you're going to spend 11 years building machines born to run Linux the point is is that you have to think big and follow your passion we're a bunch of weirdos who like Linux and want to make the best Linux machines on the planet. 
and uh, <coughs> we tricked that guy into putting on this penguin suit. <coughs> and so, uh, and I gotta say that it's the most fun thing in the world, even when it's super stressful, even when Reddit's like yelling at you because they don't understand anything and they just like to flap their mouth or in this case, tap on their keyboard. <laughs> but uh, but it's a really good time. I just want to touch on this penguin suit. Um, <laughs> this guy is uh, our new kernel engineer. He can't see you that he's in there, but he's in there. <laughs> and uh, we were, and it was it was like his first week there, and I was like, I can't not haze him. <laughs> and so he comes over and he's like, he's like, oh yeah, you know, like you're having a drink, and I was like, yeah. I was like, but you you can't keep up with me, so don't even try. <laughs> and he's like, no, whatever, dude. Like I'll I'll keep up with you. And so we're drinking, and and uh, he he gets called aside to like talk to somebody. He comes back, and I was like, I was like, you how got, how long were you gone? Like I've already drank like six drinks <laughs> in that time. And he's like, you did? And I was like, yeah, you got to catch up, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get someone to put on a pink suit. <laughs> I, I had like six shots while you were gone. Here you got to drink those too. That was so fun. <laughs> That's me in a top hat. Yeah, and have fun. This is uh, this is Cass. <laughs> he he was walking away from a carousel, and I snapped this picture, and I was like, man, that he looks so cool, but the carousel, it, it doesn't look right. Is that so, an iPhone? No, it's a it's a uh, Pixel. That's the All little like right. scan thing on the back. Uh, this was done in GIMP, free software. <laughs> you can check it out. <laughs> All right, so now we're through the slides. Now we're to my favorite part. Do you have any questions for me about System76, about anything that I've talked about so far, <coughs> or about penguin suits? I'm here to answer. <coughs> I'm interested in uh, the development process on the laptop form factor. Like, I see it looks like you're uh, laser cutting the Brillix for the input and production. To see, are you going a similar route with the laptop? Uh, so. So we have the laptop, right now we have boards that we made, custom boards that we made, and, uh, and we haven't gotten to the enclosure yet. Um, I'm assuming it will be prototyped in acrylic, but it will ultimately be, we have metal fabricating stuff at, that is, at the, is coming to the facility okay. because our, spoiler alert, our um, desktop is, uh, is like, brushed aluminum and wood. Oh cool. And so the and wood. so it'll it'll be the I think it'll be the same material that ultimately is on the Are the you laptop. A form of like reductive manufacturing like CNC or well Are you at liberty to speak about that? Um well the the answer is mm. is that that I'm the community manager. <laughs> and so <laughs> when when you say a reductive form of manufacturing, I think two things. Either I can bullshit and be like <laughs> that. Or I can be honest and say I don't know what that means. So. <laughs> Which are you choosing to do? <laughs> both, both, best of both worlds. The uh, all I know is that it looks freaking awesome. I got it. <laughs> so maybe sometime I'll like snap a picture and then like share it on Twitter, and you you can tell me what's happening <laughs> in the picture. Uh, yeah, the engineers, I'm sure they know that stuff, and if they don't, we're not going to admit that publicly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and did you have a second part to that question? I felt like there was something in there. Are you going to be going all the way down to the board design level and uh, yeah, so doing your own motherboard layout? And ultimately, that's the plan. Um, probably not in the first iteration. Right now, we have we're the one thing we're experimenting with is a for the laptop is a NUC motherboard, and then we just took off all of the port stuff, and like we have our own PCB that it connects to that handles like the USB C slash charging and the and the other ports that run into it. Um, it's that project's about three weeks old, <laughs> like and as far as actually like having a design to like 
work with and everything. So, because we've been working on desktop forever, and then one of our engineers was like, I have this prototype for a laptop, you know, and we were like, we we're like, we can't possibly do that yet. And then we were like, oh yeah, you did quite a bit of work here. Good job. <laughs> like, let's, let's order this stuff in and let's play with this. <laughs> so, uh, so right now we're kind of just in, still in the R&D phase, like trying to figure out what exactly we're going to tackle in the first iteration of the laptop, but it'll, be, <coughs> but it'll be. Ultimately, the goal is to get down as far as as far as we can. Back in the back. Yeah, I'm assuming that um, for creation of your own like editing system, you use some kind of Unreal Engine. That's not necessarily true. We because when you work with these partners, you know they get their cut, and. Uh, uh, the answer is we're going to have to ultimately see. It might go up, but that would be a result of uh, more premium materials being used, less so than than like any part of operating that. Um, so I think that I think I I don't think I can't speak to how much it'll change, but I don't think it'll be a large enough change that like. Anybody who's buying the machines now would feel like they were <laughs> paying like an extra premium, especially like compared to the other laptops that are out there. Like you can buy a Dell XPS 13, and it looks nice, but like it's also more expensive than like our Galago Pro, and it's not aluminum like this. It's not, you know, actually premium materials. So. When are you making a free boot firmware if you buy them as part of the plan? It is part of the plan. It's always been a part of the plan. Uh, did anybody go to um, the Crowd Supply CEO's talk? Anybody at all? Okay. He had this like thing up on the board that was like, good, fast, cheap. <laughs> and you can only pick two. Good being like good, open source, respecting, like freedom respecting. And then fast, of course, we know what that means. And then she, we also know what that means. And so um, we're always walking this line of good, fast, cheap. Because um, contrary to what Reddit thinks, most of our customers are you know, enterprises doing big things. And they want to buy machines to where their engineers are using Ubuntu anyway. They want to <coughs> not worry about it. They just want to open up the machine, get to working, and have a good time. And so the. So we try to be pragmatic about walking that line between how much of this can we feasibly you know, open and be freedom respecting with and what is going to ultimately make it hard for the developer you know, over at Tesla to work on the project that he's working on. And so these things, it's a balancing act. Hopefully, as we take on more of this, we can, be, we can get down deeper into like, we played a lot with Core Boot and we're gonna continue playing with it I hope that we can get to a world where we where it's just like a <coughs> no-brainer, like it's core boot, you know, and it's or Libre boot, and it's like it's great, it works well, everybody's happy, um, but we're not there yet. Uh, but we're gonna keep talking about it. We're gonna we're during this laptop project. I think is when we're gonna talk about it most. So if you're watching our stuff, you'll be you'll probably see some blog posts from the engineers who are working on it, talking about what issues they face and. And yeah, I think a lot of things will help you with that. I mean, I know that Apple Tech would. It'll be a lot easier too when we when we release the the hardware, um, you know, like the layout and everything. Like we have the repo; it's not open yet, but like it'll be easier to say like, here's what we're working with, here's the build of materials, here where here's where you can order this so you can you know dev with us on it. You know, let's figure out how to make this work and make this work well, and so. I mean, the main obstacles in the area right now are non-cooperation from the manufacturer, like you know, Intel putting management engine stuff and yeah. everything in. That, uh, but so a company that was interested in doing it, I think, could really mobilize the. Yeah, and we've talked about doing things like Power Eight and other um, architectures too. Um, the biggest thing comes. So most of the machines we sell are desktops and laptops, and so like, we want people to be able to jump on and just install the <coughs> applications they want to use and, and get off to the races. And, but uh, I could see a world where we possibly use a different architecture 
a different chipset in order to get more towards that freedom respecting good <laughs> part of the triangle. Can you tell us uh, something about your distribution system? Uh, the the imaging system that we use? No. It's oh, like the actual one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right now we have uh, so we have a partner who works with us on the design and manufacturing of the chassis and you know just generally like what you see here and uh, and then that comes to uh, our assembly which is in uh, I think we have an assembly in Denver and in San Francisco is that right yeah well it's in San Diego and San Diego yeah gotcha and so uh, so we have two uh, places where the machines can be assembled and uh, and that's and so when you go to the website you know you pick the configuration it gets assembled at one of those two places either San Francisco or, or Denver and then we ship it out um, we as far as like sourcing parts and stuff um, that is made easier by making sane decisions about what goes in the machine. So like, for instance, like not a Broadcom card. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> but we have relationships with those partners. Like, so that's Intel, NVIDIA, and uh, well, really, that's, that's pretty much it. Like, and then whoever we decide on for a product for the like hard drive and, and RAM. The, and, uh, and I can't speak much more to that because I don't know much more than that. But, but uh, actually, uh, my question uh, is really about some more mundane issues, like how much does it cost, and about cross-border issues. Okay, so how much does it cost? And who do you ship with? Uh, we ship with UPS. Ooh boy. Um, <laughs> the, and uh, and the the border stuff is is what actually is like probably the hardest thing. Like we get feedback all the time. Like I mean. X, Y, or Z, and I want to buy a machine, and then they talk about taxes, you know, on the machine, shipping the machine out there and everything, and our options are either open a distribution center in every country <laughs> that has a VAT tax, or, or people pay the VAT tax, and, um, and you're right, that's really mundane, but it's really also kind of sad because, uh, because it's, it sucks to want to have a customer who wants something and you want to send it to them and but they have to pay like a big premium to get it out there and so uh, that'll that'll be fixed as we as we grow like we talked about having you know a distribution center in the EU and in the UK which will make some of that easier but it's a matter of scale too like as we get as we get bigger, you know, that allows us to pour more money into into these things. Right now, we're really a domestic, you know, company. Like most of our customers are domestic. Um, that has been shifting, but but uh, we're definitely. So what, still what does your laptop cost? This one. Yeah. This is nine fifty okay. base. Um, that's with an uh, an i five seventy. Or seventy? What's the i5? The seventy three hundred or seventy five hundred? I don't remember. And this is what a fifteen inch screen or it's flat. This is thirteen. Thirteen inch, 13 -inch high DVI screen. Uh, you can get up to thirty two gigs of RAM in it, six terabytes of storage, and it's two and a half pounds. Oh, oh I, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Come up afterwards, pick it up, like look at it. Yeah, less than three pounds. That's don't good. go through my files though. But, <laughs> 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 but you can do anything else. Something related to the Cards Against Humanity game? <laughs> no, we don't talk about that. That's <laughs> um, so, uh, did that answer your question at all? We can talk about it more afterwards if you want to. Yeah, I shipped a computer to my cousin in, in Hungary, and uh, he was disappointed to discover the tax he had to pay to get it out of customs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Half price didn't change. Yep. Oh, my God. That's very, that's very typical. <coughs> uh, you take some... He, he said I should, if I should have... Scratch it up, and then it could have become abused. But yeah, you take some liberal commie like me, and suddenly you have me espousing free trade <laughs> 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 propaganda. Just to, to tell you the source of my question, uh, I 
went to uh, a Parts Express. They had a small item that I was interested in, and they said, "Oh, we ship with this company." I said, "No, <laughs> I'm not going to do that because yeah. I don't want to deal with those people." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know that. Do we do we ever ship with anybody else? No. no. You used to use DHL. Yeah, at one point, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do they have a question in the back? Yeah, um, so the whole presentation, you guys were talking about like how you're building and how you're going. And I was just curious, like, what is kind of the consensus? What's the number one concern within the group for people who work there out day to night? Number one concern? Well, it's been the death of unity lately. We don't really have, <laughs> we don't really, I don't think, we're pretty optimistic and positive because like things are going great for us. Like we work at a company where we get to talk about and work on Linux all day and sell Linux computers and we make a lot of money doing it and demand keeps going up. So nothing really keeps me up. The things that keep me up are like... Sounds like Reddit. Yeah, Reddit? <laughs> yeah, no, for me definitely, but I'm the community manager so I get exposed to it more, but like um, yeah, the, the thing that keeps me up personally is uh, trying to convince like the community that we're not some soulless like corporation. There's we're so used to like being angry at corporations that like people people get really angry like like trying to think that like I'm trying to trick them like I'm in your head and I'm like trying to trick you like buy our machines. There's something wrong with it, but buy it. Like we, we want your money and like. Generally, we're just like happy people who are like, who are like, we're gonna make Linux work really great on this, and we want everybody to buy this because this is awesome and it works. And uh, and so, I guess that's what keeps me up. So if you see somebody on Reddit being mean to me, just be like, hey, bro, <laughs> I know Ryan. He's a good guy. I mean, he's a little weird. Let's be honest, but. He's got a good heart, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know him that well, but. It'll take a while to break that mold. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I really, if I was going to say something about the community more generally, I just really wish we'd be more cooperative with, with companies who are pouring money into, you know, like making Linux awesome. Because uh, somebody, somebody put it best. Like, I thought about just swearing off Reddit for a while <laughs> because. I didn't like going there because there's just a lot of negativity, and and that's I'm sure I'm not the first person who works with a Linux company that didn't want to go on Reddit, you know, to like have conversations with people because and it's not just Reddit, you know, it's just generally like like uh, let's let's be let's be mean to like really bad companies like the ones who are like. Mining all of our data and being like generally bad, like Uber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll all pile on Uber, yeah. and we're, we're yeah. it, but no, like like let's lay off on the canonicals and the red hats and the people who are pouring lots of money into making open source software awesome because they're usually people just like you who are just interested in this <coughs> stuff and they just happen to be lucky enough to get paid to do it, but like they're they're not. They're not bad people, so let's let's not make their missions and and them feel feel bad because they're doing good things. Um, I have a question. It's kind of uh, in the weeds, I guess, for this. But um, so before coming to the light, um, my experience with laptops is one of um, like, and the operating systems that come installed on them was that you know the OS that came installed was sometime. Um, in a way that, like, just installing off, you know, like, say Windows, you know, uh, you get a laptop and it comes with Windows that has, you know, all the, just the right mix of drivers for all the funny pieces of hardware installed just the right way so that, you know, it all works fine. But if you reinstall and you have to download the drivers off, you know, website or whatever, well, best of luck to you. You know, maybe that'll work out. Maybe, you know, that peripheral will or will not work. Mm. Um, my, uh, my, my question then is, you know, how does that work with System76 and the OS that gets installed? Do you just take, 
you know, is it is it just like you know system seventy six the contributions that we do just go back in they just go upstream into the actual yeah. kernel and then we install vanilla Ubuntu is like so how it works or uh, I'll walk you through how you would go about reinstalling uh, Ubuntu on the machine and then that will illuminate how the process works so you'll take a live seat you'll take a live disk you'll plug it in you go through the the process of um, you know installing it and then there are one of two things you can do one it'll probably work just fine if you encounter a bug it's likely it's likely patched in our repo so we would encourage you if you encounter a bug from a fresh install to in install the repo to see if that fixes the use our repo to see if that fixes the bug. The PPA. The PPA. And then what we do is we carry whatever fix that is until upstream accepts it. So we test it, we know it works, so we ship it to our customers and then we if it's applicable we say, hey, you know, whatever the wherever the bug is coming from, here's what we did to fix it on our machine. Will you accept this upstream? And most of the time they say yes, we'll take it. And then it becomes part of everybody's experience. Your images have that, that PPA pre-configuration. Yeah, but if you go to support.system76.com, it has this thing that says restore or reinstall your operating system, and it details like how to add the PPA there. The uh, I know that our, P our repo has been ported to other projects, like it's in the Arch user repository. It's in, uh, somebody maintains a f Fedora, um, repo but I don't know enough about like where they are actually have that information but I've been working on tracking that down and putting it in our tutorials so that if somebody wants to run Fedora on it they can. Also uh, may or may not be talking to Fedora maintainers about actually having like a legitimate you know like repository that we control and that people can add so. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that, that perfectly answers the oh, question. Oh, the other thing though that's interesting is uh, uh, we have a we have the daily whatever the night well nightly we have nightly Ubuntu whatever is the most current on our imaging server and the way that our imaging server is written and Jason one of one of our engineers has talked about this it actually pulls in the patches every night and then we have fresh whatever that is ready to image the next morning and that's really helpful because throughout the process of a release we get to test literally every day to see what's changing what's happening what we have to account for which allows us usually if there's something that we recognize you know right before the release that we feel like needs to be patched or whatever and it's just not going to happen before they cut the release then we can do that which I've heard some people say like uh, during 1510 I think when wireless broke really bad on a lot of machines, our customers didn't see that because at the last second we were like, whoa, 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 something happened. Like, we can fix this. And then ultimately it got patched. But our customers who did either a straight upgrade, you know, or got a machine in the mail never, never, I won't say never. I, we didn't hear them saying like, whoa, wireless is broken. Um, so that's really good as part of our process of um, testing. So that allows us usually to not have to ship a lot of stuff to the repo because we can we can be one of the first like canaries in the coal mine saying you know upstream like whoa like the image is doing something funky today. But uh, for if you do encounter problems, then we say install the repo. If you don't encounter any problems and everything's great, then just you can just use stock. The repo does have uh, our wallpapers in it, <laughs> so that's important. It has our new pop theme, which I'm using right now, and uh, this is not going to be this is not going to look great because, as you can see, this is now I'm on X, and this is a high DPI. High DPI this was generated on a high DPI screen, but now I'm on a low DPI screen, so it's. But yeah, this is our pop theme. It's really really quite nice. So. When you get home, you know, install that, use it, tell us what you think. And it's going to be used in your crown paint machine, correct? What's that? That thing can be used on any machine. Yeah, it, it can be used.
based on it's a GTK theme, so you can apply it anywhere. And eventually, somebody needs to make a cute version for uh, Plasma users. Yeah. <laughs> I like his reaction. If you do it, we'll help. <laughs> <laughs> So, given that Linux is a community, and given that I think most people in the room like System76, we have a vested interest. Like, we want you guys to keep making great hardware for us. <coughs> so, like, beyond being a customer and things like that, are there simple ways like to help you guys out? Thank you, Micah. Uh, yeah, the that best wasn't planted. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best way is to uh, so we have we have support.system76.com, which is a bunch of tutorials and general help docs that are maintained in GitHub. It's all marked down, so you literally, like, at the top of the page, you'll see the little Octocat, and you can click it and go straight to the article and make a change, or submit your own article. And we've been trying to use that as a, as a repository for a bunch of just general knowledge about, you know, using... Uh, it doesn't have to just be Ubuntu, but just using Linux in general on the desktop, and, uh, and it's continued to grow, and uh, now I find myself being like, when I want to do something, I'm like, oh yeah, that's there. I can just pop up the, the article and read through it. And uh, so we we accept any, you know, well, we don't accept any pull requests, but we'll look at it. <laughs> and uh, the and I would encourage people to contribute there. I will send you swag if you contribute. And so if you want free swag, then contribute. <laughs> and and uh, if you do something like really awesome, uh, like write this is one of these things that I say and then I regret later <laughs> if you write m 50 articles I'll send you an expensive piece of swag <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's fair it'll be it'll be worth the piece of swag and uh, other than that um, the hardware is going to be up on uh, Git repository soon, so you'll be able to look at our open hardware designs and provide feedback, and that would be really helpful, especially if you're, you know, an electrical engineer or, you know, you, you have knowledge base there, because uh, we're, this is something we're really interested in doing, and we want to think outside of the box as well, like, you know, um, input is something that we keep talking about over <coughs> and over and over again. We talk about the keyboard so much <coughs> and because I don't use the caps lock key. Does anybody else use the caps lock key? I disable it every <laughs> install. I, actually I don't understand why it's got such a prominent spot on the keyboard. Make when it an extra I control key or something. Yeah. We don't need the space for two keys there. The command line caps lock is going to be a bigger the computer was going to be used by secretaries a lot. And so they would stay, they need the caps lock. Yeah. That's all, that's, they, they didn't figure it was a real computer. Yeah. Okay. That's, it's just crazy to me. Like, And so we talk about input. We talk about input all the time because we want to rethink like what, like this keyboard and this mouse that we've, the, or track pads that we've had for a long time. And these are the kind of conversations that we're going to start having out in the community saying like, okay, well, what if the caps lock key isn't there? What goes there? What does it need to be the same size key? Does it need to be there? Does there need to be a key there? Like, how does it look? And these are the questions that we want to to answer. Partially because we're kind of a unique group of people. Like, we're interested in tech. We're interested in having these conversations about the caps lock key. And so we might have different needs than like, you know, Edna, you know, who's just looking at Facebook. Have you ever considered having like an optional keyboard? Two or three different keyboards that, that yeah. can be we've, we've talked about optional keyboards. We've talked about the, um, what do they call it when it's like, it's at a, yeah, it's like a, it's like curves, like the I, butterfly or whatever. And, uh, and, yeah, and, and, <laughs> yes, yes, it's a bit. I hear this every day. Like, when are you going to get the nipple? <laughs> like, I, 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 uh, the answer is I, I don't know if it'll ever come, but I think that there is. So what the better question is, what problem does the track point solve? And is that the only way to solve the problem? You know, are there 
are there other ways? Are there better ways? You know, and the and we we've been asking this about every part of the machine that we're the machines that we're working on. You know, like what's the reasoning behind this? Is there is there a better way to accomplish this? And uh, that's been really helpful, and the community will be able to help us answer those questions more holistically. So we'll. Um, I got a question back here, and then I'll come to you, Tyler. Only 